Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at polarization using filters. So let's get started. It starts here by saying that a polarizing filter, also called a polarizer, will allow light to pass through in one plane only. And remember in the previous theory video, we looked at the difference between plane polarized and unpolarized light. And we saw that plane polarized light has electric field oscillations in one plane only, whereas unpolarized light has electric field oscillations in every plane. So a polarizer or polarizing filter will allow light to pass through in one plane only. It then says if a second polarizer, often called an analyzer, is placed in front of this, it will block the light totally if rotated through 90 degrees relative to the polarized light. And here you'll see our setup of two polarizers where the first one we call a polarizer and the second one we call an analyzer. So in the picture here you can see we've got unpolarized light and then our first polarizer and then our second polarizer, which we call an analyzer. So with the unpolarized light on the left, let's say this was coming from sunlight and it was passing through your first polarizer, which has a vertical plane of polarization here. So this is going to let light pass through in the vertical plane only. And that's why we have the polarized light shown as this vertical line here. However, if you were looking at this light with your analyzer, let's say that the plane of polarization was vertical to begin with, but you rotated the analyzer around 90 degrees so that the plane of polarization was now horizontal, then that means that the brightness of the light that you would see would go from a maximum down to zero brightness when your analyzer is at 90 degrees to the polarizer. And that's because this analyzer will only let light through in the horizontal plane, whereas the polarized light was in the vertical plane. So we're not going to see any light at that point. If you were then to rotate the analyzer through another 90 degrees, then we would get back to maximum brightness or maximum light transmission. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So if you look here, we have a setup very similar to what was just in the notes with the unpolarized light on the left. We've then got a polarizer, which is polarizing the light in the vertical plane only. And that's showing our plane polarized light in the vertical plane. And then if you've got a second polarizer, which is your analyzer, you can see how the light will change for the observer. So right now we've got the polarizer and the analyzer positioned to let light through in the vertical plane only. But if we rotate the analyzer, notice what happens to the brightness of the light. So when it's at 90 degrees, we get no light transmission. And then at another 90 degrees through, we get maximum light transmission again. So the light seen by the observer will go from maximum brightness to zero brightness, and then back to maximum brightness again, as you rotate the analyzer from zero to 90 degrees, and then back to 180 degrees. Going back to the notes now, it says the blocking of light is easily demonstrated by overlapping two polarizers which have polarized light in the same plane. In this instance, they allow light through. So if we look at this picture here, the two polarizers have the same orientation. And when you overlap them, the light is transmitted in the same plane. So you're able to see through the two polarizers. Whereas it says turning one of the polarizers, i.e. the analyzer, through 90 degrees means that all light is blocked where they overlap, as shown below. So on the right hand side, you can see when you've rotated your second polarizer around at 90 degrees, then that means where the two polarizers overlap, you're going to get the light completely blocked. It then says the effect of polarization can also be demonstrated with other transverse waves such as microwaves, but it's important to remember that polarization cannot be produced with longitudinal waves such as sound, only transverse waves. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation to show you polarization with microwaves. Now in this setup, you can see we've got a microwave transmitter which is emitting plane polarized waves towards this polarizing grill which is basically just made up of metal wires. And then we've got a microwave receiver over here attached to a meter. So this could be like an ammeter for example. And right now you can see we're getting a strong signal in the meter which indicates a strong microwave signal being detected. And this is the case when the metal wires in the grill are positioned at 90 degrees to the plane polarized light here. And this is perhaps counterintuitive because you would think that the lines would get through the metal wires when the lines were positioned parallel to the plane polarized light. But in actual fact, it works opposite to the case that we saw for light. So if we rotate the grill here, you can see that we go to a weak signal there and then back to a strong signal and then back to a weak signal and so on. So when the metal wires on the grill are positioned like this parallel to the direction of the electric field oscillation, then we get a weak microwave signal detected. Whereas if we rotate the grill back round so that the metal wires are perpendicular to the direction of electric field oscillation, whereas if we rotate the grill so that the metal wires are perpendicular to the direction of the oscillations of the electric field here, then we should get back to a strong signal. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.